morning guys um, in a little rush this morning because I want to capture the sun rising so I've come to a local park I'm in a rush I'm gonna be out of breath uh, but I want to get to this one tree I know where it is I've been here many a times I want to get the sun rising from this I think it's an old oak tree uh, so I apologize for the heavy breathing but um, we're gonna crack on four actually sun rises I've got about 20 minutes it's a 20 minute walk so what a good 15 so we've got a got a right romp on to uh, get to where I want to get so I'll catch you guys shortly I've got the uh, monument here. Nice blue sky, pinking up slightly, so it looks nice. No, I'm actually at the bugger already. Oh. 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 There we go, God, lovely. You're not going to see it on here. Oh, trust me, got a nice couple of pink streaks in the sky. This is lovely. There you go, you see that. Okay, guys, we're nearly there. Oh, nearly there. I'm gonna make it, I think. Probably about 10 minutes to spare. But, uh, dearly me. Uh, it could be a lovely, lovely sunrise. Not too much cloud in the sky. There's a little bit of high cloud, but that might just be enough to give it that little extra dimension to the image. There is actually, I think there's a couple of trees down here that are really, when you see them, you'll realize that these are very photogenic. Uh, it's got some fantastic trees on the park. Uh, I'm definitely not going to make it to any of the others for sunrise. I'll concentrate on this one. I know I can reach it in time, so that's why I'm heading that way. <sighs> very surprised if I don't need it so I'm gonna put my grab up get it out anyway get ready so we'll just go through the image very quickly quite simple I put the tree on the left hand third of the image. I've got the sun behind one of the branches. Uh, I'm F22 to see if we can get any sort of sparkle. I think as it rises in the next 10 minutes or so, I might get that, that sunburst. So we've set up, got the 0.9 grad on, um, ISO 100, it's a one, second exposure uh, we are getting a little bit of a burst to one second exposure now I'm just going to set the camera if I zoom in I just want that sun just behind my other branches just to give it that burst so let's have a look zoom back out just go a little bit tighter and set the image again. We'll refocus. Now I've moved. As it bursts through, we might get some lovely light round the train as like a green Cooper spoil in the shot. Come here, Coops. <laughs> um, come here, mate. So as we've uh, 
yeah, might get some nice light around the bottom of the tree when it really kicks off as well, which is another thing I'm looking for. I might even do a multiple exposure, a blend of two or three, maybe as the sun bursts through the bottom of the tree, and then uh, we'll get that nice sparkle, if we can, of the, the sun above. The sun is starting to burst through now, so we need to concentrate a little bit. I will bracket the shot as well. Let's get a few shots off and we'll discuss it a bit more. We're starting to get that burst through, that is lovely. Okay, some not real nice light coming through now. So let's go through that image again. I'm gonna, I am bracketing the shot. I've got some lovely light in the bottom of the tree there. So we place the tree on this roll of third here. We've got the nice sun bursting through. It's like I say, F22. And then we've got these lovely, the light coming through underneath the tree here. It looks superb with that green grass. It will really make it pop. Just gonna... The only thing that I don't like about it is that tree there. And there's a bit of a little tree to the right hand side that's just popping in to the frame. But I'm gonna keep it in the frame and I might edit that out or crop it. I've really enjoyed that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, we'll, well, I'm going to go scout around. I might be able to get one of the deer with the sun behind it or something like that. Uh, so I'll probably ch change the lens to the long lens while I'm walking around. See if I can capture anything else. Um, but I'm quite happy with the image I've got. And then we'll get back and process it and uh, see what the end result is. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get this um, image edited. I'll just go through it with you, um, show you how I edit this particular image. And uh, there is a couple of different ways I, I might, I'll show you how, how I'm going to edit it. And then um, it's a very beginner's edit showing you through Lightroom and Photoshop. So let's, let's crack on with it and I'll show you. Okay. We open up Lightroom, so I'm going to pick these three images um, here. And now the simple way to do it really is I've got an underexposed, overexposed, and a, an, an exposed shot of the this tree that I've this subject, this tree with the sunburst behind it. So my settings were F22, and then obviously ISO 100. Um, it was at 35 mil and then the different settings were there was one at a sixth of a second there was one at um, one eighth of a second and then there was one at um, five seconds I choose the correctly exposed one for the foreground um, and then we can really I don't think I'm going to use the third one so I'm going to concentrate on these two so what I'm going to First way to do it is, and the easiest, is to select both, control, and then I'll just click on the, the images that I want. Um, and then we right click on the image, photo merge, HDR. And let that, see what that comes up with. Right, I 
I've got it to auto align, not auto settings. I like to do the settings myself. So this is all in Lightroom at the minute. So we'll merge that. We'll let that merge. Let the photo develop. What it gives me, it gives me full control over the areas of exposure. So we'll select the image. There's the image processed. Now obviously we've got um, a very highlighted area where the sun is. But let me just show you what it's actually done. If I so it's the exposure is from from one range to the other, literally from all the way around. So I've got that control over the photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is we'll just reset that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring the highlights until it's not um, completely blown out. So we've got that that sunburst. Now the front isn't the the front the foreground isn't too badly exposed for what I'm looking for. Probably want it slightly more exposed, but we'll so we'll I'm just going to up the shadows, which will bring that out. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the um, graduated filter and I'm going to drag it down because we've got that besides the tree, we've got a nice fine line there. Um, we're going to reset the effects. So if you click, double click on the effect, you're resetting all the different um, dials. And then we're going to down the exposure. So that, that's basically dropping the exposure of the sky. The only sort of problem it's doing is, it's putting that part of the tree <coughs> as more silhouette. Putting that part of the tree is more silhouette. I apologise for the dark. So one way round it is go to the bottom of the brush adjustments and select luminosity and then show luminosity mask. So if we click on that, that shows and see how it's it's um, the exposure is affecting the, the part of the tree. But if we change the range a bit, like that, just bring that range in a little bit, it's now not a, not changing the exposure of the tree, even though it won't look that much different because it was quite silhouetted anyway. So if we press done there, that's a lot better photo. Um, it's, it's done less, uh, adjustments to the tree and, and and made it a more realistic image. Now another thing I can see a problem is I've got I've got a bit of dust either on the sensor or my camera lens. So if we zoom in have a look, there's the dust. There it is and there's a bit of a mark on the end here. Right on the edge of the image. So I'm gonna get rid of them. I prefer to get rid of things like this in Photoshop, but it, because of where it is and what it is, it, this will get rid of it quite easy, or should do. So that's that done. Let me just get rid of the dots. Um, so press the spot removal. Just click on that, and it'll select a different area. Click on that, it should select a different area, which will just move away from there. Done. Jobs are done. So that's removed anything that I, I want removing. Um, let's just have a, another close look. We've got some nice deer here, just in the background. The image, the image looks quite nice. We'll just go over the image a little bit. Yeah, it looks quite nice. That's the image done really. I don't have to send that into, um, into Photoshop, but I'll, I'll see if I can do it a different way in Photoshop. But that that's that's a real nice image. The only thing I would do now is we'd um, click these two little buttons, which we do on every every image. But then I I'm gonna put a slight vignette in because the sunburst is in the middle and it gives draws you into that drama of the tree. Now the other thing I'm going to do, what I like is, is this 
light area around the bottom of the tree, this green or greeny bronzy colour because of the sun. Um, and I want to highlight that. And I also want to highlight these these bursts of light coming where it's creating the shadow of the tree. So um, we'll, we'll select our adjustment brush and we're going to do some local adjustments. So we we'll reset it. And I'm just going to up the exposure slightly. Now that gives me like a dodge and burn tool. And if I can just, it just highlights that there. And it'll just bring that beam of light out, that beam of light. And we can just highlight one or two little different areas that I want to highlight. And it just changes it that little bit. Excuse me, that's where we are. Um, and I think that looks pretty much photo done. I'm not sure if the, I know it sounds daft, but that little cloud is a distraction for me. So I'm just going to get rid of that or have a look, see if it looks better or worse. We'll just do that. I think that looks better. I don't know why with that little cloud, I kept drawing me eye to that little bit of cloud there. So, so that's, that's pretty much that done now. So that's the only thing I can change is the temperature. I think it's a little bit too warm for what it was. So I think I'm just gonna just make it a little bit more because it was a chilly morning. So I'm quite happy with that. The only other thing I might do is select the, the brush tool again, reset it, and I'm just gonna up the texture and I'm just going to paint over the tree so the tree is nice and sharp, even though it's pretty sharp, it'll just bring it out that little bit more. So I'm just going to paint over the tree just to highlight that silhouette of that tree. Right. I'm pretty happy with that. That's quite a nice photo. What I'm going to do now, the two images I started with, I'm going to select the two of them. Control, press control and select the two images. I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Right, we've got Photoshop, we've opened it. I want to keep this foreground, but I want to use the background of um, the bottom image. So, bottom image, I'm going to use the sky, top image, and use the foreground and the tree. So, what I'm going to do, I want to select this area here. So if we go to select, select sky, and it's selected sky. Now I'm going to click on the bottom image. Right. I'm going to copy it, create another layer, and paste. That image is now of the sky. got the image of the sky. Photoshop has done that for me. If I drag that above that image, it puts it above it. To... Okay, so what we're going to do, I'll duplicate the bottom layer. I'm going to filters, camera roll filter. Up the exposure. A little bit. I'm looking at this middle line here because I want it to blend better with the two other images. So I've just up the exposure a little bit. Save that. So that, that exposure is slightly darker than that one. Uh, drag it up there. Um, I'm going to select the sky again. So select sky, but on my new image. This time, I'll go up to select again and invert. Now that what now that's done is selected the foreground. So now I've got a foreground, and I'm going to copy that, make another layer, paste. 
Now we've got a foreground and a background. That's the foreground merged with the background image. That's the two images together. So let me switch that one back on. And that's a, a lot nicer blend, but it's too dark in the foreground. So what I'm going to do with the foreground selected is just drop the opacity. Now that looks a more natural image. So we'll just go over what I did. I selected the sky, made a layer. Then I've selected the foreground and made another layer. Down the opacity so we're getting a nice blend between the sky and the foreground and therefore I've created my own HDR image. I've merged the two images together to create the exposure I want from the sky and from the foreground. I'm going to just tweak it now in Lightroom so we'll, we'll save it up to file, save, now that should now save it in Lightroom. So we've got them both in Lightroom this is the image now that you can see um, that I've edited in Photoshop and then brought it back into Lightroom. This is the image that I've edited in Lightroom. Um, so all I'm going to do now is go back to the Photoshop image. Do some adjustments now in Lightroom just to bring it to where I want it to be. Um, so graduated filter just bring because I want that sky that little bit darker it's a little bit bright for me so we'll reset the adjustments drop the exposure slightly and again if you have a look we're starting to get shadows the deep shadows where the tree is a deep silhouette let's say so I'll, I'll drop the exposure to somewhere there again Scroll down to the bottom of the brush and it's got range mass off and we're going to change it to luminosity. Show the luminosity mask. Drop the range of that. It's where we think, which is somewhere there. Done. Now that's a more realistic because what it has what it's done is it's changed the background but not the tree, not the dark shadow, it's just changed the lighter areas. Um, and again, I'm going to do, let's call it dodge and burn. I'm going to do a bit of dodge and burn. So we're going to select the adjustment brush, reset it again. Just up the exposure, just a touch. And we're just going to highlight this green area around the tree and where the sunlight has just caught the grass in front of it. So there we are. And it just brings that little bit of extra to the vid to, to the video. Brings that a little bit extra to the photo. Um, and that for me is pretty much it. Let me just add a little vignette. Just see what yeah. Well, well, I like that. Just slight vignette, especially because of the the sunburst in the middle. And the only other thing I'm going to do is. We'll select the local brush tool again. Um, where are we? Sorry, we'll select the brush tool, um, reset it, and we're just going to up the texture just to make that tree, the tree branches nice and sharp, and we'll just paint that in there. And it just makes the tree pop out that a little bit. Done. We'll have a look at the before or after that, which is not a lot of difference, just a little bit more more highlights and, and things like that, and then we've just darkened that area there. So that's that's quite nice. Now we'll compare, we'll switch between the two images, one of from Lightroom. So this is the Lightroom image. This one is the Photoshop image. The Photoshop image. So They've, edit, they've ended up editing quite similar, I think. So 
make your mind up, see which one you like the best or both the same. If they're both the same, then I would say the easiest way to do it is in Lightroom because it was far, far quicker. But if you've got something, a different image, I'm sure a different image, you pr probably would end up using Photoshop to do it. Um, so I hope that's helped, helped you out. I'm going to put the two images together, see if you compare them. Please let me know which one or which um, process you prefer and, and probably give me the reasons why as well. Look forward to your comments and um, I hope it's, hope it's helped you out a little bit. And until then, I'll catch you guys on the next video.